Practice exam one, part three. Question six, true or false questions. 6a, an invalid argument must have a false conclusion. That is false. Recall that we define validity in terms of the form of an argument, right? So any particular argument is only valid if its form is valid, and its form is valid if and only if that form has no substitution instances with true premises, all true premises, and a false conclusion. So um, the claim is false. An invalid argument must have a false conclusion. False. It is possible for an invalid argument to have a true conclusion. Consider the argument, um, uh, if Dan is Australian, then Dan is happy. First premise. Second premise, Dan is happy. Conclusion, Dan is Australian. Uh, all those premises are true, right? Sorry, all those statements are true, so it's two true premises and a true conclusion. But that is not a valid argument because the truth of the premises doesn't force the truth of the conclusion, right? It is not valid because the form of that argument is P hook Q, Q, therefore P. And you can find substitution instances of that form where all the premise is true and the conclusion is false. All right. So this argument, so this is an invalid argument with a true conclusion, the one that I, the one that I said. So therefore, a 6a is false. An invalid argument must have a false conclusion. No, an invalid argument can have a true conclusion if its form allows for a substitution in instance where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. 6b, neither C nor D can be symbolized as so. C nor D can be symbolized as that, false. Okay, no it cannot. Always read your symbolizations back. Remember, there's a 30 point section on your coming up exam, symbolizations. Um, when you do them, please read the symbols back into English and make sure that that English sentence, the result, the result of your, right, the English sentence you get from reading after you've made an attempted answer, you've given a symbolization of the sentence, read the, the that read that symbolization back, right, and make sure it's equivalent to the equivalent logically equivalent to the original English sentence. If it's not, you've made a mistake and try again. So what does this say? This says either not C or not D. How am I reading this? I'm saying the major operator first, right? It's the major operator is the wedge, so it's either not C or not D, right? That's very different from neither C nor D, right? Think of that, you will get an A or a B example, right? To note the difference between the two forms. If I say you will neither get an A nor a B in this class, are you worried? Yes, it means you're getting a C or worse. But if I say, say either you're not getting an A or you're not getting a B, right? That can be satisfied and, it's, and you can still get an A you didn't get a B. It can be satisfied and you still get a B, you just didn't get an A. So not as much worry. So different. All right, so neither C nor D properly is symbolized like this. Right. This is, <clears throat> it is not the case that either C nor D. It is not the case that either C or D. Or otherwise put, neither C nor D. Right, and of course this is logically equivalent by the rule you'll learn in unit C. Unit 8, De Morgan's rule, that we've spoken about already. Uh, that's equivalent to that. Both not C and not D. That's what you're saying. Neither C nor D is you're saying both, both not C and not D. All right, 5C. The negation of a contradiction is what? The negation of a contradiction is, sorry, ah, that's 5C. We're up to 6C. Thought I'd been over that again. <laughs> uh, 6C. Any contradiction is logically equivalent to any other contradiction, right? So as I said, when answering 5C, you should think this is the truth table concept, right? So the negation of a contradiction, we had F, 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 F. You should think negation of F, 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 F is true, 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 right? So 5C, negation of a contradiction is a tautology. This question, any contradiction is logically equivalent to any other contradiction, okay? Just think the truth table this is a, the true or false question, 6C. Think the truth table 
um, understanding of the of all the concepts involved here. Contradiction, logical equivalence. Okay? So you've got what is a contradiction? Well, any contradiction is F F F F. I do I do four rows. You know, a contradiction if it has three variables will have eight rows. If it has only one variable, like P and not P, that's a formula with just one variable, which is a contradiction. It'll have only two rows, right? In its in its truth table where you've listed the base columns. Right? Listing all the variables involved in the formula, it is only one. So P and not P, you just need two rows. But just think the image, I think it's four. So that's what a contradiction is. Every other contradiction is also F, 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 F. So now what is logical equivalence? Logical equivalence equivalence is when right, two two formulas are logically equivalent when the columns under their major operators are identical. Which of course is true in this case. It does hold in this case. This contradiction, every this contradiction is all F. Every other contradiction is also all Fs. So yes, it is true. Any contradiction is logically equivalent to any other contradiction. Sixty. Uh, C and C and D is a subformula of that. You should know that it is false, right? It is not a subformula of that because. Um, in the construction of in the construction on the uh, of the consequent of the longer formula, right? Uh, the not C and not D, you didn't put C and D together, right? At no point in the construction of this formula did you put C and D together. What did you do? You took C and you negated it, right? And then you took D and you negated that, and then you took those two things, which are different, and then you conjoined those, right? So no, it is not a subformula. False. 6e. A contingent statement form logically implies any tautology. Again, just think it in terms of the truth table um, image, as it were. So what's a contingent statement? A contingent statement is one you've got some t's, say, and, and some f. At least one t somewhere and at least one f somewhere in the uh, column under the major operator. That's what a contingent statement is. A contingent statement is a statement that can be true and can be false. Right? So it's not a contradiction, not all false. Not a tautology, not all true. But some true, some false. You have this image, whatever you want, just some true, some false. But uh, a contingent statement is for a contingent statement form logically implies a tautology. You know a tautology is like this. Okay, the question is, does one logically imply two? Yes, it does, because even if this is three Fs and one T or whatever, right, it does, one does logically imply two because there are no cases of true going to false. There are no cases of true going to false. And if there are no cases of the first formula being true and the second formula being false, then one, the first formula does logically imply the second formula. That's why, for example, a contradiction logically implies any other formula, right? And any formula whatsoever does logically imply tautology. Tautologies are implied by everything. That's why, as we'll find out later, the set of tautologies is the same as the set of theorems, which are formulas which can be proven with no premises, as you'll learn in Unit 9. Uh, so that's 6. That's 6. That's six e. True, a contingent statement form logically implies any tautology. Yes. Okay. Section B, symbolization. Um, so, uh, I'll start this in a new section.